dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, a priest went to bless a house, a couple with three children lived there in that house. They had two daughters, one son. And after blessing the house, the family, they asked the priest to pray for their intentions separately. And the priest said, OK, you do one thing. Write your intentions on a small piece of paper and give it to me so that I may pray for your needs by mentioning your names. And after a few minutes, they gave him these requests written on a paper. So the first request, the father comes and he gave that small piece of paper to the priest. And in that it is written, Father, pray for my daughter's marriage settlement. And within brackets, mostly with a boy who has settled in US. And the second intention, the mother comes. She hands over the piece of paper to the priest. And the mother's intention is this. Father, my parents' property is in litigation. I'm fighting for that property. Pray that the court may give verdict on my side so that I may get the property of my parents. The third note given by the eldest daughter in the family. And in that it is written, Father, this is very personal. Please don't mention this. Don't tell to my parents. I am in love with a non-Catholic boy. And I wish to marry him. Well, my parents are not accepting for this marriage. Therefore, kindly pray that my love may be successful. The fourth intention given by the second daughter. And in that intention, it was written, Father, I'm interested in fashion and modeling. Pray that I may become an actress one day and be famous. The fifth intention, the last one, the son. And in that piece of paper, it was written, Father, I want to live independently. I don't want to depend on my parents. And I neither believe in marriage. I want to go to US, do some business there, earn a lot of money, and become rich. These are the five intentions given by that family to that priest. After reading those intentions, the priest was literally shocked. It saddened him because all their striving and the orientation of their personal life was what I could do in this world, how I could fulfill my needs in this world, what I can become in this world. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is from another place. And as his followers, belonging to his kingdom, we do not belong to this world because our citizenship is in heaven. And that's why Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you because the world and all its desires are passing away, and those who do the will of God will live forever. How true it is, my dear friends, one does not pray any time to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Does anybody offer mass intention for that? No. Nobody prays, Lord, May the sins of our family be forgiven. Nobody prays. Nobody prays with a longing, Lord, we wish to be with you in heaven and enjoy eternal life. Nobody prays for these intentions. Well, people are so obsessed with a desire to fulfill all the material needs in this world. And so-called preachers, teachers, healers, cash these needs of individuals 
and they pray long, long prayers in order to please people who are in front of them so that they could fill something in their pocket. Well, a Catholic priest and the Catholic Church will not do that. The Catholic Church and the Catholic priest will speak about the need in one soul to belong to God after all the needs of the flesh disappear at death. This is the need for which the Catholic Church stands today and I am ordained as a priest living as a celibate. The need in the soul to live a happy life in this body only the Son of God can give. The world cannot give because death hinders it. And that's why, dear friends, you have come to this Holy Eucharist in order to say to the Lord, Lord, it is you alone who fulfill this need in my soul to belong to you and rejoice in this body forever. But most of the people are not bothered about this need. They want Jesus to do miracles in this world. And Jesus has to fulfill the desires which they have in this world. And I have seen many, very many pastors these days, I see on YouTube, sometimes I laugh at myself. One individual pastor is praying angels to shake the bank accounts of individuals. And people are listening. Because they want monetary gains from an eternal banquet. They want monetary gains. They want a perishable thing from a God who says, I will give you imperishability. When angels shake bank accounts, a lot of money is deposited. It's him. I don't know. People are going and listening there. This is how it is. People want to fulfill the desires that they have in this world. And prayers also. All of them are command and demand. Lord, I command you. You said, ask, it will be given. Therefore, I am asking, do this, do this. Rightly so, once I was with a group of people in the hospital, and uh, one of their members was, uh, the, one of their members were admitted in the hospital, and that woman was 90 years old, and she was in the ICU, and they invited a pastor to pray. And I was seeing the situation, and the pastor is praying, in the name of Jesus, I tell you, rise up and walk. 90 years old lady, she is battling for life. She is about to die. She is in the ICU. Do you think it is practical? Rather, what should be our prayer? We should pray, Lord, forgive her, her sins and remember her one day in your kingdom. Can there be any beautiful prayer than that? The thief on the side of Jesus prayed that. He did not say, Lord, if you are the Christ, let me come down. He said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. So therefore, oftentimes, very many people do not know what they are praying for. We look for easy means, easy gains. When we are suffering with fever or any other problem, we do not ask the Lord to give us the strength to face the situation. Take away. We always want to give burden to the other. And, and the scripture says, Jesus took our infirmities and bore our diseases. It's not magically he removes our pain. He removes our sickness. He bears it. On the cross, he bears every sickness, every situation, every feeling that is in your heart. He bore that. So therefore, what we need to pray is pray for the salvation of your family members. Pray that you remain in God's grace. Pray that your sins are forgiven and you are steadfast in your faith. For Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? When he comes, what situation will be in we don't? If all our needs are satisfied by the world, where is our need for God? Let's examine about this. 
St. Paul says, seek the things that are above and not the things on earth because you are dead for this world. I have a very important context to interpret this verse. If we really seek the things that are above, why do we encourage caste feelings within Catholic communities? Why do we encourage linguistic differences between Catholic communities? Why do we encourage regional feelings? Why this bias? And why the so-called elite prayer groups that are developing now, elite families too, and leaders also, they don't dare to do anything for the people of lower strata belonging to the Catholic community. They just distance themselves from them. Why? Why this bias? Why we are so self-absorbed? And God warns us today, beware of self-absorption. Beware of accumulation. God has given us all these resources so that we might share with those who do not have. And according to me and according to the Bible, I feel there are only two castes, good and bad. And we'll be standing in front of God. The good will go to heaven and the bad will go to hell. King Solomon had everything he wanted including wisdom, riches. But finally, he comes to a conclusion. He says, all things in this human life are a vanity. The entire human life on earth without Jesus can be summed up, dear friends, in one word, vanity. I'll give you an example which changed my life when I was an intermediate student studying in the seminary. I was reading the book of St. Alphonsus Liguori, preparation for death. In that, there is an incident. I think you all might know the famous author, Thomas A. Kempis. He wrote a book called uh, Imitation of Christ. Very many people have read that book and benefited a lot. So in that, Thomas A. Kempis's brother built a very beautiful home. And he invites Thomas in order to bless that house. And when he comes to that house, the brother of Thomas says, see, such a beautiful house I built. Look at these precious stones. Look at the luxury in my house. How wonderful it is. Do you think anybody will have a luxurious home like me? And the servant of God, Thomas A. Kempis said, brother, there is one defect in this house. There is one defect in this house. And his brother asked, what is that? The door. When you die, you will leave all things behind and you will vacate from this door. And your relatives will be the first one to take you out. Detach yourself from the world before death detaches you from it. Why all vanity in human life is because death hinders everything and everything is limited by time. The truth is, there is something about eternity in us and we are created for God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 5 says, man is created for eternal life. That's why nothing in this world will satisfy us. Everything will fall short of God. That's why there is disproportion, disenchantment. We don't have proper happiness unless we find our soul's rest in God. Therefore, our treasure is our master, Jesus Christ. He alone is the joy of living, the king of life to all of us. Living this world is our journey to eternal life. It is not an end in itself. Jesus said a powerful word, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get all that you have worked for, all that you have earned for, where does it go? Jesus used you fool because we always think about tomorrow, about the future, not knowing what will happen the very next minute. 
we plan our life for the next 20 years. How selfishness rules our life. We want our prayer requests, no, everything based on selfishness. Me, my, my family, my future plans, my daughter should be like this, this, that, everything based on selfishness. That's why Jesus says, you fool, this very night, your life is demanded from you. Then where will you land up? I want to tell you that Jesus is not against our growing rich in various, in various areas, but he cautions us. He tells us about laying treasures for oneself and not being rich towards God. There is a quote which says, whatever, whatever I give to God remains, whatever I kept for myself is lost. Dear friends, do we turn to God and the sacrifice of his son and the eternal life that he has promised to us. Let us make a serious examination every day. What are we looking for? Because a very important question for all of us, where will you spend your eternity depends on the choices that you make when you are living. In heaven with God or hell with Satan? What are you most busy with in this world? To please the Lord and walk in his ways, working out on your salvation? And if you think, I know not Christ, then you will never know the purpose of your life. If you don't work out your salvation, you will lose everything. And Jesus tells us, this very night, your life is demanded from you. Where will your soul be? If we are united to God, we can say together with St. Paul, for me, to live is Christ and dying is gain.